More ransomware this week. This time it's a new variant of Globe. Since we've never really talked about this ransomware before, I wanted to give you guys a quick introduction. So this is a ransomware based on the Blowfish algorithm. So it's not AES. And it does a few other funny things. First of all, it comes with a debug mode. Now that is kind of odd for ransomware because the attacker obviously wants to hide their footprints and including a debug mode kind of gives that away. And this file also uses an HTML application instead of your traditional notepad popping up for a ransom note. More interesting behavior, it actually scans your computer for VirtualBox or VMware applications and if it detects a virtual machine, it will terminate itself. The original variant had a dot purge extension, but uh, this new one, I believe, has a different extension. We'll find out soon enough. It also deletes shadow volume copies, disables Windows startup repair, and um, of course, changes your wallpaper. So the way the debugger actually works is if you change a registry key value, it is going to run in debug mode. Before we actually execute it and screw up the system, I want to go ahead and show you different parts of the program as we can see in our disassembler over here. So if we look at these strings, um, we can get some relevant information. First of all, we know that this was created in Delphi. That's the programming language. And if we scroll down far enough, we're going to start seeing some interesting stuff. We can notice the registry keys it creates, software Microsoft Windows, current version run, software slash globe, and this probably the name of the recovery file, how to restore files, that's what it's called. And uh, if we keep going, it has a lot of key strings. Of typical software that you would find in a malware analysis machine like VirtualBox service, VM tools, Wireshark, OllieDBG, sample.exe in case that's how somebody names their malware samples. So in that case it is going to terminate. So all these keywords are being thrown out, VBox, Virtual PC, Virtual, Anibis, VMware, What's funny though is that last time I checked, even though I haven't really taken any steps to hide my virtual machine from detection, it actually ran successfully. We'll see what it does this time. I'm trying to scroll down and find the actual debug mode messages because those are quite interesting. Now these are the directories that you're looking at, app data, program data, program files, WinDIR, these are the directories that it probably does not encrypt. And then it just starts scanning and uh, it tries to delete system restore points. And if you can notice, um, there's a command for recovery mode enabled here. And it has some interesting keywords here as well, sandboxes, CIS, which I'm guessing is Komodo Internet Security. Backups, DLA, profile, driver, shares, desktop. And as you can see, it does have a message where it says sandbox detected, work interrupted. I was here, bye. If we keep going, we're going to notice the messages of debug mode. As you can see, these are the messages that it will show you if you run it in debug mode. First of all, it starts scanning user profile folders, then it starts scanning all local drives, and then it goes for shared folders, so I guess that's the sequence in which it works, and then finally it gets to the desktop folder. Now you might find this interesting, but the reason why cyber criminals usually go through it in this order is because if something was being encrypted on your desktop, you would notice that. And you might try to shut down your computer, thus terminating the encryption process. But if they don't want that to happen, they're going to do that last, so that by the time you even know what's going on, all your important files in your folders are destroyed. And then it has this work completed message. 
after that it sets the desktop wallpaper and uh, we have reached the end of this application of course there's a lot more to talk about in terms of the actual disassembly but i'm going to save that discussion for more in-depth videos later on let me know if you want to see more you know malware analysis videos because i wouldn't mind making them so use the poll in this video just let me know if you would be interested in seeing something a little more in-depth than usual but for this video i'm just going to stop it here and um, now we're going to actually run the ransomware on this computer and see what it does. If we look at the fault properties, as you can see, it's kind of suspicious. It doesn't have file description, a lot of blank fields here. If we run it, it spawns an application called helper.exe that requires admin privileges. If you give it that, first of all, it deletes itself. And now it's doing all those things that we looked at in the disassembler. As you can see, we already have uh, an encrypted file and uh, the restore message. If we check on our pictures, everything is encrypted. And this time it uses the G support extension. What surprises me though is that I do have VirtualBox service running in the background, VirtualBox guest editions but it seems to have no problem doing its thing. Maybe it's not so shy of virtual machines anymore. If we click on how to restore files, it comes up with this Bitcoin address, and the email is goodsupport at india.com, so I'm guessing this ransomware was created by someone in India. I guess some tech support scammers might have leveled up. The ransomware amount is 0.8 Bitcoin, that is 480 US dollars. That's quite expensive. These are some greedy jerks. And as you might notice, this is in fact an HTML application and not a notepad window or browser window or anything like that. Finally, our desktop background has changed. This is quite different from what was used in the previous variant. I mean, look at this message. Um, even this thing is not well formatted. For more information about restore your files, read the file, or contact us by email, what the hell? I mean, when are ransomware developers going to know how to even write their messages? I mean, hire someone. You're charging people $480. You can obviously hire someone to at least write you a message, right? I mean, come on. <laughs> I'm being ridiculous, but well... Um, not as ridiculous as the email address they give. Good support at india.com. Trust me, there's nothing good about creating ransomware, hijacking people's files, and then asking them to pay a ransom to get them back. There's nothing good about that. No matter how many goods you add in the email address. It's really funny. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you want me to cover more threats because there are a lot of threats coming out every day. A lot of major ones, a lot of silly ones, and there's just so much stuff out there. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Try to vote on the polls that I'll be creating on this video. Let me know if you want more in-depth coverage of ransomware. And don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it share it with your friends, and uh, consider supporting me on Patreon. This is Leo. Thank you for watching, and as always, stay informed, stay secure.